I'm Meghna Chakrabarty, host of On Point, and I'm coming to L.A. for a live recording of the show. We'll be talking about the origins and lasting legacy of West Coast hip-hop. It's August 3rd. Tickets at las.com slash events. LAist Studios. Today on the LA Report. The heat dome sitting over the southwest U.S. is not going to change much over the next several days. The rabbit fire in Riverside County is up to 25% containment. And Democrats in the legislature are persuaded to increase some criminal penalties. This is a very measured, very narrow bill. It only addresses those that traffic and sell our children for sex. Good morning, it's Monday, July 17th. I'm Suzanne Watley, and you're listening to the LA Report from LAist 89.3. It was a brutally hot weekend across Southern California. Regions differed widely with coastal temperatures in the 80s and 90s, while desert areas ranged from 100 to over 120 degrees. National Weather Service meteorologist David Sweet says Southern California residents may notice a slight cool down at the coast today. But many areas inland will continue to be well over 100 degrees into Tuesday before we finally start to get a little bit of a break. Wednesday. Overall, though, there is not going to be a whole lot of change to the inland heat wave through this weekend. Meanwhile, there is a slight chance of mountain thunderstorms today due to monsoonal moisture. Four wildfires are burning in Riverside County, prompting evacuations and road closures throughout the region. The Rabbit Fire is the largest. It has charred 7,600 acres in the Lakeview area, and firefighters have increased containment to 25 percent. This fire broke out around 3.30 Friday, northeast of Gilman Springs Road and Jack Rabbit Trail. Let's continue this morning with some developments on the transportation front. The Amtrak Pacific Surfliner is back in service today after another round of repairs. LAist's Sharon McNary has more. Repeated landslides undermining the tracks in the San Clemente area have had the Amtrak train in and out of service over past months. But daily train service through South Orange County is back on. And it'll have extra trains added to the schedule Friday through the weekend to accommodate crowds heading to Comic-Con, X Games, and Del Mar horse racing. When the train was out, shuttle buses were taking passengers around the repairs happening on the track close to the San Clemente Pier. For LAS 89.3, I'm Sharon McNary. The L.A. Metro bus system is testing out a six-month pilot program called Headway-Based Operations. LAist's Daniel Martinez says that it's one of the most popular bus lines that is subject to this, Line 16, which runs between downtown Los Angeles and West Hollywood. Under the program, buses will keep a certain distance from one another to avoid two or more of them arriving at a stop at the same time. That means that drivers will not follow a fixed schedule. Instead, they'll get notifications to speed up or slow down. Joseph Forgerini is with Metro. We're going to focus more on the spacing between each individual trip. You have them drive the line rather than the operator just focusing on arriving at the individual five or so time points. Funnily enough, L.A. Metro had given the headway-based operations system another try before, when they launched their Metro Rapid Line back in the early 2000s. That program was eventually discontinued. For our latest 89.3, I'm Daniel Martinez. Since 2018, a Medi-Cal program has provided chronically ill patients with their own coordinator to manage care. 90,000 patients later, a new audit finds that it saved the state an average of $1,100 per patient by reducing ER visits and hospitalizations while improving health. The study's lead author is Narade Purat. When you provide people with the type of care that they need and they fall into the right setting, as a result, expenditures could go down. But you really have to pay attention to who the individuals are, what their needs are. Following the trial program's success, California implemented giving Medi-Cal enrollees those extra coordinated services, as well as outpatient respite care away from home and sobering centers. The number of Californians dying from alcohol liver disease has steadily climbed since 2006. Stephanie O'Neill-Pattison of KFF Health News says there was a dramatic increase during the pandemic. 
Excessive drinking during the pandemic increased alcoholic liver disease deaths so much the condition killed more Californians than car accidents or breast cancer, according to provisional data from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The state's death rate from the condition was 25 percent higher over the last three years than in the three years before the pandemic, the data showed. At its peak in 2021, the death rate from alcohol liver disease was nearly double what it was two decades ago. Nationally, it's the most common cause of alcohol-induced death. The rural eastern and northern parts of the state have been especially hard hit. In Humboldt County, the death rate from the condition is more than twice the statewide rate. Alcohol liver disease is usually caused by years of excessive drinking, but can also occur after a short period of heavy alcohol use. There are often no symptoms until late stage disease when weakness, confusion and jaundice can occur. I'm Stephanie O'Neill Pattison. Coming up, Democrats in the legislature are persuaded to support increased criminal penalties for child sex traffickers. Back now to the L.A. report. Democrats in the legislature recently blocked a bill to crack down on criminals who traffic in children. But CAP Radio's Nicole Nixon reports they reversed course late last week after public backlash and pressure from the governor. Senate Bill 14 would classify trafficking of a minor as a serious felony and make it subject to the state's three strikes law. It's authored by Senator Shannon Grove, a Republican from Bakersfield. This is a very measured, very narrow bill. It only addresses those that traffic and sell our children for sex. The bill passed the full Senate in May without a single no vote, but it ground to a halt in the Assembly Public Safety Committee with no support from Democrats. The next day, Governor Gavin Newsom got involved in a rare move. I talked to Senator Grove about it this morning, which is indicative of my desire to see what we can do. Mounting public pressure led the committee's Democratic chair, Assemblymember Reggie Jones-Sawyer, to allow a special hearing to reconsider the bill. He and three other Democrats changed their votes and joined two Republicans to vote yes. That measure passes. Though he voted for the bill, Jones-Sawyer said he doesn't think it's perfect. We can't keep doing this incrementally because we're not, do, we're not really solving the problem. Some Democrats on the Assembly Public Safety Committee have argued the state's past criminal justice policies have led to over-incarceration of black and brown people. They generally don't support bills to increase any criminal penalties. But Grove and other Republicans took the bill's approval as a victory. She said she's confident it will make it to the governor's desk this year. In Sacramento, I'm Nicole Nixon. Temperatures today will be similar to yesterday's, with highs in the 80s to around 90 degrees from the beaches to downtown Los Angeles. Heat advisories remain in place for the San Gabriel and San Fernando Valleys, where temperatures will be in the 90s to around 100 degrees. The Inland Empire will see highs from 98 to 107. In the Coachella Valley, very hot and windy, with highs 114 to 119 degrees. Thank you for listening to the L.A. Report. You can read more news at LAist.com or listen live anytime on the LAist app or on the radio at 89.3 FM. The AM edition is hosted and produced by me, Suzanne Watley, with assistance from producer Tyler Wayne. Our engineer is Federico Garcia Rodriguez. Catherine Mailhouse is the Director of Content Development. LAist's executive editor is Megan Garvey. Original music by Scott Kelly. Check back here at 4 for the PM edition. Listeners like you help make the LA Report possible. Please donate at laist.com slash join. And the LA Report is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live. I'm Antonia Cerejido. LA Made from LAS Studios tells the story of bold local innovators. In the new season of LA Made, MG Lord and I tell you all about Barbie. It's the true story of the making and marketing of the most famous doll in the world, told by the people who did it. We'll hear from Mattel co-founder Ruth Andler, who spent years trying to convince her own company to make a teenage fashion doll. I think that the men were less daring than I was. It was a different time. I was going to buy a doll with breasts. You may think you know Barbie, but we promise lots of surprising and sometimes hilarious stories, like how Ken was created by men who didn't want him to be manly. And here stood this doll that looks exactly like Barbie in the crack. <laughs> and I was shocked. And I said, well, look at the way you built Barbie with those bosoms. Subscribe to LA Made, The Barbie Tapes, wherever you listen to great podcasts.